The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to uh, worship on this uh, uh, snowy, snowy day, right? Snowy weekend. Uh, uh, spring is coming though, right? Uh, spring will be here soon, so uh, we well, hope, for, hope for that. We're tired of how many want another snowstorm? No, I think we're tired. We're tired of that. Um, Let's just make a few announcements before we begin our worship time, and I want to make this one just so I don't uh, forget it. Providence member Evelyn Lundgren will be turning 99 this coming Sunday, March 26, and we're just kind of uh, hosting a uh, card party for her. She's at the care center uh, in Camby, Camby Senior Haven, so if you wish to send her a birthday uh, greeting, uh, she's in room 145, so I uh, hope that... Uh, some of you can uh, offer her and celebrate with her her 99th birthday. What a what a great delight uh, to be able to celebrate that with her. Uh, just a few other announcements. Uh, of course, we'll be gathering here on. Uh, oh no, no church at Providence this morning. Uh, the church is totally under a snowdrift. So uh, hopefully, we'll get that uh, cleared out by Easter Easter time. But so welcome, Providence members here, and some of you might be listening to us on our radio broadcast or, or viewing us on our online worship. So good to have you with us. Um, so Wednesday, we'll gather here, uh, weather uh, permitting, uh, six o'clock for a fellowship meal, and then our Lenten worship at seven, of course. Um, youth are still selling Easter flowers to adorn our chancel area, so if you want to remember a loved one, honor a loved one, you can purchase a, a Easter flower uh, today. They'll be helping you after worship uh, this morning. I want to give uh, a thanks this morning for our radio services. They're given in memory of Clayton and Jean Halverson from Delane and Ryan Ingebretson, and the, the bulletins this morning that you have in your hand are sponsored by the Memorial Fund. Cooking with Grace is on Monday. I don't know, do we have a meal planned for... Everybody wants to know what they're serving for Cooking with Grace. What? Barbecues. Barbecues on uh, Monday for Cooking with Grace. That starts at 5.30. So with those announcements, I'll invite you to stand and uh, greet those that are gathered around with you, and then make sure you turn to the camera and offer a greeting to uh, those that are joining us online. And we'll continue worship with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. The words are printed for you in your bulletins. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, you come in close and keep us yours. Equip us by your spirit to confess our sin, embrace your forgiveness, and seek the way you set before us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And with honesty of heart, let us confess our sin. Merciful God, I confess to you that my will is handcuffed to sin, and I cannot break free. I have spoken when I should have kept quiet. I was silent when I should have said something. I acted when I knew better. I was still when I knew I should have moved. For the wrong I have done, for the good I have failed to do, have mercy on me. Through Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Amen. O people of God, look to the Son, given to heal you and set you free because God loved the world so much. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. Our opening hymn is Amazing Grace, hymn number 779.
And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Then we uh, uh, have the opening dialogue that's printed in our bulletins this morning. We begin in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what does this mean, this belief? I believe that God has created me together with all that exists. God daily and abundantly provides for me. We confess that Jesus is Lord. He has redeemed and freed us so that we may belong to him. And how is this possible when we are who we are? We believe because the Holy Spirit calls us. So called, gathered, enlightened, and made holy, we praise God. This is most certainly true. And we bow our heads and our hearts in prayer. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated for the scripture lessons. Haley Gritmacher is our lector this morning. The paragraphs are flip-flopped in your bulletin, so we'll start with Psalm 23, but those verses um, are under the second reading. The first reading is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel is a whole page in our bulletins. The pastor's going to ask the congregation to be seated during the reading of our gospel this morning, a reading from St. John, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, as Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. So we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. And then he went and washed and came back, now able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? And some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. 
And he kept saying, I am the man, but they kept asking him, how, then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. And then I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. Then they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then when the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight, he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, Well, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? And how then does he now see? And his parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he'll speak for himself. So his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. No, I'll have you stand for the sermon. How would that be? (laughs) I'll invite the kids to come down for a little message. If you want to join me on the rug up here, that'd be great. So come on down. So if you were, yeah, good to see you this morning. You can sit up here on this, you can sit up here on this rug too. Is there room for everybody on this rug? We might have to get close to each other, huh? Is that okay to sit close to each other? All right. Wow, good to see all of you this morning. Did you have to shovel some snow before you came to church today? No, it was already done. All right. Great. Wow, great to see. Isn't it great to see so many kids? All right. All right, so if you were listening to the story that I just read, it was Jesus, and it was about this man who had some trouble seeing, right? In fact, he... He said he was blind from, Jesus said that he was blind from birth. He couldn't see at all from the time he was a baby. He could not see anything at all. Can you just close your eyes a little bit? Just close your eyes and then what do you see? Nothing. No, nothing. So that's what it was like for that blind, blind man his whole life. This is all that he could see. So Jesus, I got, I got something for you to see. I've got, I, I have some, some, paper that helps us to see. Do you want to do some tricks with some paper? Yeah. All right, everybody gets a, everybody gets, oh yeah, I've, I look at, these are Pastor Kendall's glasses, because Pastor Kendall can see, but he can't see real well, so he needs these, he needs these things. You want to try some of these on? You want to try some of my, usually I'm going around looking for my, you can try those on. See what, do you want to see what you can see through here? Anybody want to see what you can see through these glasses? Okay, all right. I got two more if you want to see, pass them around. You want to see, what can you see through there, Asher? Can you see, does that make you see better or worse? It's blurry, that's, that means it's where you want to try these. Yes, she already has glasses, yeah, so look back here, look back here. Do you see any people with some of these things on that are called glasses? So everybody hold your glasses up. Aren't you glad you have glasses? You once were blind, but now you can see. All right, yeah, these help us. These help us see. Do you want to help here? So everybody gets a sheet of paper. I'm going to show you something with this little thing. I'm going to, everybody gets a sheet of paper. And then I'm going to have you, do you want to help pass some of these out? 
everybody gets a sheet of paper. And then what I'm going to have you do with your sheet of paper is uh, once you have your sheet of paper, I'm going to show you a few tricks about, about your eyes because you know your eyes are such wonderful parts of your body. Right? How many eyes do you have? Two. two. You have two eyes. That's right. Yeah. And aliens it's have I, three. Yeah. aliens have three eyes. You're right. That's, 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 that is correct. Yes. Thank you for reminding us of that. Okay. So once you get your piece of paper, I'm going to have you fold your paper. You ever, have you ever done this before? You fold your paper in to make like a little telescope. Yeah. So you make a little telescope. And then I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to show you how you put a hole in your hand. How many of you want to have a hole in your hand this morning? All right, I'm going to teach you how to put a hole in your hand. So does everybody have their paper folded like this? Just fold it, fold it in a circle. And maybe our acolytes could help them. Some of the kids fold, fold there. All right, fold. You want to just, here, you take mine. Just fold your, and if you want to follow along, you could take your bulletin and fold your bulletin if you want to, if you want to do the little eye trick. Uh, all right, so we'll fold, fold it. Everybody's got it folded? All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to put a hole in our hand. Are you ready? So you're going to put your, you're going to put your, uh, put your telescope. Oh, you do need some help? There we go. Yeah. Maybe this was... Sometimes the pastor thinks he's got a great children's sermon and then it turns out to be not so great. All right, who else needs help? Do you want to help? Uh, all right, everybody's got their telescope now. Ollie, okay, you can grab mine. Okay. All right, everybody's got the, Okay, you need some help. All right. I'll, all right, there you go. Tobin's got his. All right. Are you ready to put a hole in your hand? All right, now put, your, put the telescope up to your eye. Put your telescope up to that and keep both eyes open. You gotta keep both eyes open, okay? Keep both eyes open. I gotta go this way. Do you have both eyes open? All right, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your other, you, you got one hand that's holding your telescope? Now put your other hand right in front of there. And do you see you got a hole in your hand? Do you see that? There's a hole in your hand right there. Do you see the hole in your hand? Try it again. Right there. Hole in your hand. Do you see it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now take your hand. Now take your hand away. Take your hand away. Put your telescope back up to your eye. All right. Now now close. Now close one eye and put that and open open both eyes. Do you see your hand? Now close close the one eye that doesn't have the telescope in it. And your hand disappears. Look at that. Your hand disappears. Open both eyes. There's your hand. See it? Now close the one eye and it disappears. See that? So that's a little magic, magic trick with their little. Did you know that? Isn't that fun? It's not magic? Oh, okay. All right. You called me out on that. All right. Jesus healed a man that was blind in the story today. He was born from birth. Jesus gave him, Jesus gave him ability to see everything. And you know what Jesus wants you to see? He wants you to see him. So let's put our telescopes up to our eyes one time, and then we're going to turn up to the altar. And do you see Jesus right there? All right, in your telescope, can you get Jesus in your vision? Put, it, put, put the head right in your vision. Can you see Jesus' head right there? And the, there's Je That's what Jesus, what do you see around Jesus' uh, hair? What do you see around Jesus' hair, though, when you look? Yeah, I see, that's Jesus right there. But what, it's the sun. Look at it, behind his head. Do you see that? It's kind of glowing. Because Jesus is the light of the world. Can everybody say that? Jesus is the light of the world. And that's what Jesus wants us to always see. Now, I've got one more thing for you over here. So, you know how Jesus made the blind man see? He took... He took some dirt, he took some dirt just like that, and then you know what he did? He spit in the dirt to make mud. So he spit in the dirt and he made mud, and then you know what he did with the mud? He rubbed it on Jesus' eyes. So I'm going to spit in this dirt, and who wants me to rub that on their eyes? Do you want me to rub that? No. It was kind of a, it was kind of a messy thing, wasn't it? 
But I bet you if you could not see and you could put mud in your eyes from Jesus that would allow you to see, I bet you you would do that, right? Look around here and look at all the people that love you right here. And that's what we see with our eyes. The eyes, our two eyes, but also we see that in our heart as well. And when we look at Jesus, the light of the world, should we look at him one more time? We know that Jesus loves us as well. Do you see Jesus up there? On the, do you see Jesus? Yep, Jesus loves us. So we can say that we love you too, Jesus. Should we say that? We love you too, Jesus. All right. You can stay up here if you want mud in your eyes. I'll make some for you. <laughs> Otherwise, you can go back to your parents. You can keep your magic telescopes. I better keep my glasses, though. So if you got my glasses, I better keep them. All right. Thanks for coming down. Acolytes, mud in your eyes? No? Well, grace to you and peace uh, from God our Father and from our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have this uh, great uh, healing text in this uh, ninth chapter of uh, the Gospel of John. And we read 25 verses. The whole story is actually 41 verses. It's the whole chapter about this healing uh, narrative of Jesus and the blind man. And... and, uh, First of all, maybe just to say that healing texts are not what, what, what they once were. Really, when you think about healing and the healing stories that are found for us in the gospel, the miraculous stories of Jesus' healings in which the lame walk and the blind see and the deaf hear and the insane are given sanity. Again, all these stories are heard differently these days, uh, given the differently abled community's voice, which has been added to the mix of voices reading these stories and discussing these stories and thinking about these stories in the Bible. And this is not to say that people who cannot hear would not prefer to hear. If you were uh, sitting here in the sanctuary and, and, and uh, could not hear uh, any sound coming from my voice or uh, could not hear the wonderful hymn that we just sang and Chris accompanied us with uh, Amazing Grace, uh, um, that would be a very different experience than those of us who who can hear those things. Um, That is not to say that those who cannot walk would not want to walk if it were possible for them to walk. So you need uh, only to talk to someone with uh, macular degeneration to know that healing is desirable and oftentimes just not possible. I can only imagine what it would be like for a father or a mother to never be able to see his or her child or his or her grandchildren. And I can only infer what it would be like for a veteran who has returned home from the shock of the trauma of warfare and then not be able to walk again. And as I listen to uh, glorious music, I can only imagine what it might be like never to hear a single note of that great music. Beethoven comes to mind, and many of you remember that he began losing his hearing in the mid-20s, and Beethoven eventually lost all of his hearing, And yet, he composed nine symphonies. He composed 16 string quartets, he composed 32 piano sonatas, and he composed an entire opera. Uh, So, we have to say that disabilities are relative things, right? Disabilities are relative things. And as we know, the senses of people who have a diminished capacity in one of these senses often compensate with the other senses that remain for them. So ability and disability are relative terms. Sometimes because of the healing miracles of Jesus and because we live in a world that is biased toward those who conform to mental and physical norms, our own mental and physical norms, we think 
that heaven is to be a place where every single perceived disability will be reversed. But maybe, just maybe, we should think of heaven, even heaven on earth, to be a place where we live in such a way that everyone is able and enabled with Christ at the center. That might be true heaven, where everyone is able and enabled. But if you read this section of John carefully, I think you'll actually see, as at least I see, that those lacking sight in the passage is everyone except for the one that was born blind. Everyone is lacking sight except the man born blind. So when it comes to the healing stories, it's important to hear texts carefully. It's important to be certain about what these healing texts say and what they don't say. The eyes of the man born blind are opened, and maybe the eyes of the disciples will be too. They are opened immediately, but those eyes are also opened gradually. The mud and the saliva from Jesus did the physical trick instantly to give the blind, blind man sight, but the slop and the spit of his interactions with others open his eyes, the blind man's eyes, more slowly. And it gave him the vision of who it was that restored his physical sight because that comes slowly into view for the blind man that isn't immediate that comes that sight comes slowly for the blind man the light of the world starts out in his eyes as the man called Jesus and so like with telescopes we can look at the the face of Jesus and then the blind man says later, Lord, I believe. And then the blind man worshipped Jesus. But it takes the blind man a while to get there. So his eyes were opened immediately, but his eyes were also opened very slowly as well. And surely we can understand. I think whenever we go through some tragic event in our lives a death of a loved one, a loss of a relationship, a troubling situation that we did not want or ask for, when unwanted or discouraging things come to us and we have to wrap our brains and our habits and beliefs and expectations around a suddenly new and altogether different reality for us, our eyes have been opened suddenly and now they are also opening gradually. It will take us a while to get to full seeing. It will take us a while to see and to, to understand the new reality that is ours in life. And in the meantime, as changes happen to me particularly, as changes happen to you particularly, the world around us also reacts. Our families and our churches and our communities as systems always do, grasping to reestablish the equilibrium of the new reality that is truth and life for us now in this new way of life, this new way of being, in this new change that has now come to us. So the more changes there are for us, good or bad, life-stealing or life-giving, the gospel's question is this, what will you now see in those changes? What will we now see? We tend, of course, when we go through life changes, to see whatever it is we are looking for. If we are looking for someone to blame, we will find them. 
we certainly will find them. If we are looking for someone to help us in that change, we will find them. If we are looking for reasons to worry, if we are looking for reasons to celebrate, if we are looking for reasons to complain, if we're looking for reasons to give thanks, we will find them. It depends on what we're looking for. Now, Mr. Rogers told young children when I was a boy, boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And yes, I suppose it's inevitable that we should try to understand the cause of the mysteries and the changes and the complications that come to us in our lives. Why do people get divorced? Why some people are ravaged with cancer or disease? Why some have to endure the loss of ones they love? Who caused this? Who's to blame? What's to blame, we heard in the gospel? Whose sin caused this man's blindness? His own or his parents? And I think what's interesting is that Jesus had no time for such questions. He changes the subject and asks us to focus our sights on something deeper, to understand life at a different level than we have understood it before. He wants us to look for God in the places where sometimes we try to look for blame. What do you think God is doing here? And how can we help? Whose fault is it? Well, no one's fault. No one is the subject here. No one is the subject except for God, Jesus is saying, and what God might do now. So look around. What do you think God is doing? Look around. What do you think God is doing here? And how can we be part of that? How can you be part of that? Whose fault is it? Whose fault is it that you have to endure cancer? Whose fault is it that the marriage did not last? Whose fault is it that the illness has come and that the change has happened? Well, no one is at fault. No one's fault. No one is the subject here except God and what God might do here. So look around. What do you think God is doing? And how can we enter in? You know, we could spend our lives assigning blame we could spend our lives looking for the sin that caused this wrong or that precipitated this loss or made this condition to happen, but to do so is to focus on the wrong question Jesus seems to be saying to us. The question worth pursuing is one about God and what God is doing and how we can enter into that. There is a vast difference between spending your life asking whose sin caused this blindness and looking instead for the grace of God already being made manifest in life. If only we look. And if only we pay attention. And as we think about life changes, as you think about your own life changes now in this moment, the things that you have endured, the difficult things, the unwanted things, the challenging things. If you think about that now in this moment, right now, or the things that you will endure, Jesus seems to be saying, let me open your eyes to the unfolding story of your life. There are two figures who are present throughout, yourself and this Jesus who is always with you. And when your story ends, guess who it will be? It will be you and Jesus. 
It will be you and Jesus, and he will tell you who he has always been, and you will worship him. And the sight that you've craved, the hope that you've longed for, the security you have always wanted, the future that you've dreamed of, you have had all since the beginning of your story. Love has been there all along. Joy is hidden in your struggle and carrying you through it always, and maybe you can already see it and someday you will be ready to see it. Amen. Let us sing our hymn. And now, with the whole church, we'll confess our faith using the words of our Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Then we bow our heads and our hearts in prayer this morning. Sometimes, oh God, it seems as though we have too much, too much anxiety, too many demands, too many problems, too many broken dreams, too much greed, too much simply for us to bear. So here we are again coming to you because you have allowed us to see you and you have opened our eyes to your presence. So we come to you with that which is on our minds. Thankful we can pray, thankful that you promise to hear us, thankful that being here reminds us that we are not alone. So you promised to come to us in the things of this world, and we pray that you would bless our eyes and that you would always be in our seeing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Most gracious God, you sent your Son to look upon us with his deepest love. And so we pray that you would bless our eyes with the same love and widen our gaze to love others. Lord, in your mercy. And gracious Lord, be with the people we know and love. Provide hope and assurance to those whose health is threatened. Especially this morning, we lift up to you, Dorothy Anders Hudson. Be a gentle presence for all those who have lost the love of their lives. We ask that you provide wisdom and humor to parents in the exhausting work of raising children. And hear us now in a moment of our own silent prayer as we lift up the names of those friends and loved ones, especially in need of your grace. And among these, we remember Diane Seafeld, Rick Oden, Brad Matson, Julie Miron, Tom Beals, Joey Anderson, Ernest, Ken Club, Jim Anderson, Jack Flayton, Phil Moss, Monica Kennedy, Jennifer Wright, Lauren Thone, Mike Thompson, Deborah Nalo, Ryan Ingebrigtsen, Greg Erickson, April Kernvita, Tammy Brown, Gary and Stephanie Childs, Arliss Buer, Doug Breberg, and Deb Trapp. And we, of course, remember the families of Lorraine Matson, Maxine Gustafson, Alice Workamp, and Nancy Femright. Shine your light on them, shine your light on us this day. And chase away the darkness of sin, the darkness of fear, the darkness of doubt and despair, and fill us with the light of your truth, your word, and make us with a new vision and a new sight, the sight of your amazing grace and your redeeming love and your life-changing power that is for us. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we pray that you would grant it in the name of and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated now as we receive our morning's offerings.
A thanksgiving for the word is found on page 220 in the front of our hymn books. So let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness. You called forth beauty from chaos and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. And by your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. And through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. And send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. And faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.